Richard, and I am the uh, executive director and the founder of the nonprofit called Saved by Nature. Uh, today's program is brought to you by the Santa Clara Valley Open Space Authority, Saved by Nature, the Bio Blitz Club with Marav, and Virtual Photo Walk, which is a uh, We're at a very special place today with a very special person. We're going to do our best to actually keep our six feet distance uh, to model um, during this time of uh, the coronavirus. We are able to be out here, but we do have to lead by example and continue to um, stay our distance. We have uh, North Coyote Valley. It's about 935 acres. So, um, not many people have been here, so we're going to uh, explore this preserve uh, to see what we can find. Uh, we'll be looking for um, macroinvertebrates today, uh, which are aquatic insects. We'll be looking for uh, amphibians, uh, like um, uh, possibly Pacific tree frogs, uh, maybe red-legged frogs, uh, pinks. Yeah, maybe we'll see some lizards. I mean, it's really cold. I don't know if you can see how many layers we're wearing, but it's really cold. So I don't know what you'll see uh, outside of the water. The critters in the water, I think, don't mind that much. So we're trying to scoop them out with our nets. Uh, so hopefully we'll see stuff. Very unique area that we're in. And if you're from Santa Clara County, I wanted to highlight that this property is very, very important to our drinking water. Uh, over behind us is Laguna Seca and uh, is our largest uh, wetlands in the whole Santa Clara County. Um, and also Fisher Creek is running behind us. We're gonna orient you and I'm gonna do a 360 degree um, for you so you can uh, see where we're at. Uh, said that this area is very crucial to the protection of downtown San Jose and flood protection because Fisher Creek can be realigned into Laguna Seca, thus uh, you know, stopping the erosion reducing uh, the CFS, which is the cubic feet per second in downtown San Jose, and also uh, recharging our drinking water at the same time. So this area is very, very important. Um, and what I was gonna say was that we're in a very special area with a very special person. And, and the reason, um, I, can't, I forgot that, but anyhow, uh, Marav is also an entomologist and, um, and she's very involved with, um, with community science and taking people out and connecting them to nature. So. Uh, and it's a really fun way to go and explore a place. This is going to be slightly different as it's just going to be me and Richard exploring today. But we'll bring everything into your living room, which I think is awesome too. Uh, and later on, you can check uh, everything we found here so far will be on iNaturalist, which is uh, a website where you could find a whole bunch of observations that people make all around the world and you could join too and i'm gonna start uh i'm gonna do a 360 this way and so behind marav right here <clears throat> that is the santa Teresa of foothills which is you know uh connected to the santa cruz mountains and so uh we're looking south right now we're going to be looking west towards the santa cruz mountains <laughs> It is a flood control area. So you'll see some cement there on the ground that's, that holds down some of this sediment and vegetation here. And then if we start to come over here, there's the Diablo Range where we were at last week when we did the wildflower hike. There's the Diablo Range over there. can hear birds. All right. Marav has collected some specimens, and I'm going to back away from this camera so that Marav can come in and uh, speak to you about these specimens that we have in here. Give me one second, Marav. How sure. many people want to bet that Richard gets a wet foot? Oh, I'll bet. I'll bet. <laughs> okay, give me one second. Just want to get you guys in on this. This is our little dance that we're going to be doing that I'm talking about. Can you guys see some of that stuff there? Yep. Yeah. Yes. 
Hey, Tim, don't be telling people who fell into Berryessa. That wasn't me. Oh, Tim, I remember when I fell into Berryessa. Okay. And we have some stuff, but I'm going to zoom out just a little because we, the tray's a little bigger. Okay, I'm backing up six feet. Come on in, Mara. Okay, cool. So, uh, I'm sure you can't see much as it is right now. Yeah, you can just kind of see the bugs, but I'll scoop them into my spoon. Uh, or I could just try and do this for a second. There's the snail. Yeah, here's the snail, exactly. So now the snail is feeling comfortable. It has its antenna out and it's crawling on the bottom. But earlier when I took the photo, it was actually uh, floating upside down. Um, okay, let me try and scoop something out. Okay, so this is one of our tadpoles. Let's see. Yeah. Where is my hand? Wow, this is really tricky. Uh, just put, yeah. Oh, there. get it. Yeah, that's good. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. So wiggly. And Those I also sent you a photo so you could see the details better, but it's probably the same tadpole. Uh, so this is a Pacific tree frog uh, tadpole. Cool. And hopefully we'll see the adults uh, jumping around here later on. Is that and like Kermit the frog? Uh, sometimes they could be bright green, but many of them are brown or even golden, and they have many colors. And I actually read that they could uh, change color within a few minutes, which is kind of amazing. So, anyway, that tad was one of, yeah, sorry? Is a tadpole the same thing as a polywog? Yeah. Yeah, they have all sorts of common names. And those are our smallest, smallest uh, frog that we have around here. Yeah, and very common, and very common uh, almost all around California, other than some places in the desert. So the uh, creature that I'm holding now, this is a mosquito uh, pupa, okay? This is the pupa stage of a mosquito. So mosquitoes, uh, they go through uh, four different stages, just like butterflies, from an egg to a larva, a pupa and then uh, the adult, but you can see that they can move uh, pretty quickly because they still have to avoid their predators. And you can also see two little antenna-like uh, structures there. These are um, little uh, like snorkels. Uh, uh, that's how they breathe um, atmospheric mm -hmm. oxygen, okay? So they have to come up and get some oxygen from time to time. And then if they uh, sense something is coming uh, nearby, then they'll dive down to hide. Well, I've got bad news for the mosquitoes. Everybody's inside. <laughs> well, they find something else to do. You know. Okay. You're out of luck, Mr. Mosquito. The world's hiding from you. So, this um, little guy, well, there are a few little things in there, but one of them, this is a back swimmer, the big one. Okay, back swimmer, but that's a baby. They get uh, way bigger than that, maybe like four times, three times bigger than that. Uh, it's a little uh, true bug. So bugs are actually um, a group of insects and uh, many aquatic bugs. So this is one of them, the back swimmer. Uh, the baby back swimmer, like this one, doesn't have any wings, but once it will become an adult, uh, they'll have wings and then uh, they can swim from one uh, water source to another. So they can quickly find a new place um, if the, you know, if the creek uh, will dry out or something like that. And they bite, which is really annoying, but only if you hold them. So anyway, on the spoon, it's very safe. Uh, and the tiny little things moving in there are water fleas. So you can't actually see the details here, but I sent a photo to John, so hopefully you could share it later. Um, and I want to show you how I took that photo. So we'll do that in a second. Let's see who else we can find in here. Yeah, that, that's a pretty cool contraption you got there to take. Yeah, that. yeah, we'll do that in a minute. Okay, so now I've got two little things here. So the longer one that looks like a little nail, that's a mosquito larva. Okay, it's a tiny one, they get uh, much bigger. Uh, before they can um, transform into a pupa. But yeah, this is the mosquito larva. It also has a snorkel at the end of its uh, long abdomen. 
and it can get um, atmospheric uh, oxygen. The other critter you could see swimming is an amphipod or a scud. Um, a larva, mosquito larva. Larva is a baby insect. Okay, um, I saw a question just, sorry, I probably missed most of the questions, but I saw this one. Um, anyway, yeah, so you can see the um, amphipod, the scud swimming. So that's a crustacean. So it has two sets of antennas, just like uh, roly polies and um, shrimp and all these critters. But, they, but this one lives in fresh water. Oh, and now it's on my hand. Okay, now I want to show you. Ooh. Okay, I got uh, a tiny mosquito larva. And then let's see if you could see my screen on this screen. So basically I have a, a little lens right on my front lens. So I could, yeah, I think, can you see it? I think you yes. can. Yeah, yeah awesome. So that's a mosquito larva right there. Okay, but it's a really tiny, tiny, tiny one. So using this lens right here, the mosquito larva is actually in here. I hope Matt sees yeah. that. But it's really fun. And if, oh yeah, so now you can see it well, right? <laughs> and then you can take a photo and you could look at that photo and enlarge it. And then you could see, whoops. That is, there. That is the so, lesson of the day. Yeah, you can see the head is right here. And this is like wow. the thorax, the abdomen. Yeah, I mean, the details are pretty amazing. And it's That's kind of transparent, so you can see inside, right? So the macros usually have a head, a, a, a thorax, and an abdomen. And uh, in the guide that I sent John, uh, the color macrovertebrae guide, it should be in there. This is showing up very well. Nice. Awesome. Beautiful. Okay. Yeah, so let's try and get something else, okay? Okay. Since it works so well. Let me see if I have that on here. I want to get that water free for you guys because I think they're really awesome and they're so tiny you can only see the details with something like this. Oh, obviously with a microscope, but this is so much easier than handling a microscope right here. Oh, yeah, look at that. So that's a water flea. It's a tiny, tiny, it's another crustacean. It's really tiny. Wow, this is confusing. Two screens. When you're ready, one I bug. For you, Marav, the head thorax abdomen. Oh, okay. So I don't know if you could see the details that well. I also sent John a photo earlier, but you could see the eggs inside. So this is a water flea or a Daphnia. And yeah, I think you could kind of see that. That's not even on our guide. Oh, All really? right. Yeah. So these are tiny guys. You usually can't see the details and identify them. I mean. Yeah, look at that. Isn't it awesome? And you can see it's food inside. It's green. It ate some algae or something. Nice. So. Some kids watching. And you can uh, take a video, you know, of, of the water flea moving and swimming. And yeah, that's just enlarge one of these photos. So wow. I think you that's can see the colors true. that well, but like you can see that it's completely transparent. So you can see the digestive tract right here. It's green or starts green and then it uh, turns uh, red. Well, you know, you'll think about that. Uh, these are the eggs, okay? So yeah, I can see some of your comments. I'm, I'm glad people are enjoying this. Uh, you can see the eye right here, okay? And these are the antenna. So yeah, we, we can share some of these photos later, okay? So we'll find a way. We'll share them with you guys. Uh, some of them are already, um, John already has some, some photos I took uh, a half an hour ago, so you could use those, but I'll try and send more photos later. There's not really much reception here, so you know, we'll find a way. But anyway, that was cool. Let's see if we have another one here, otherwise, we can move on. It's showing up so well on the, uh, the way you're doing it on the phone, it's wonderful. Ah, got, got it. it. But the trick is to just have a tiny bit of water because otherwise they'll swim out of you know the out area the where you can see them. Yeah. So you just need a little bubble. Ooh, Ooh yeah. Nice. Look at that. So this is the amphipod, the scud, the side swimmer, whatever. 
Uh, let's see if I can move it. So you see that it has just a bit too much water, so it moves out of our view. Woo, here it is. Yeah, the guy that's good, side swimmer. Yeah. Yeah, because they swim on the side. Even if they have more water, they choose to swim on the side. So they're freshwater shrimp, and if you get like a million, you could actually have a meal. <laughs> yeah, so you know these guys, you, you often see tons of them, and they are an important food source for other uh, critters that live in there. You, oh, it's just stick. Okay. Um, you, can, you can move your phone up even closer to Richard's lens. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, but then I can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> but we can see it. You feel like a sur Do you feel like a surgeon right now? Uh, yeah, kind of, without being able to see what I'm actually doing. Yeah, but here it is. So again, it's a bit transparent. What? So let's say goodbye to all these uh, cool critters that are or going back. People, if you want to keep them, it's, uh, we could keep gathering so they can see the characteristics of them all living together and swimming together, or you can do whatever you like. But Yeah, I think it would be easier to just uh, let them so go here because, yeah, I don't okay. want them. And so what I'm going to show you really quick is what Marab was talking about um, when she's talked about the, the thorax. And so uh, most uh, macroinvertebrates, like this uh, mayfly here, which has three tails. Uh, they have a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. I sent John a, 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 a copyrighted um, a color macroinvertebrate rainbow trout guide that I created when I was with the water district and, and I worked with the Department of Fish and Wildlife uh, to create this guide. And what it talks about is how these aquatic insects are terrestrial. Some have complete metamorphosisms mean they're going to change uh, from, you know, a stonefly uh, nymph in the water to a stonefly flying away. Uh, some have incomplete, like the scud that you just seen, that is only going to get bigger. It doesn't metamorphosize into anything else. All the things that we're seeing today are food for our rainbow trout, our salmon, our great blue herons, our snowy egrets, our great egrets. That's what they're fishing for when they're, when they're in here. And so uh, this is a really cool thing. They're indicator species, meaning that the type that you find determines the health of the watershed, okay? Um, there it is, John, perfect. Thank you, John. So if we look here, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and I also wanted to mention that you, you don't usually get to see macro invertebrates the way that you've seen them today with Marab. Uh, that is a very special treat to see the, uh, to see the transparency of them uh, for kids to see that there was algae inside of that, starting from the very bottom of the food chain. But when we look here, we see that we have some creatures that you may know about, like the dragonfly. The dragonfly only lives one week outside of the water before it dies in midair. So if you ever found a dragonfly on the ground, then you know, that's, that's what, what happened. It just completed a life cycle. So if you look there, you see midges, you see mayflies, you see caddisflies. And then I drew a circle and a line to go to what that looks like after it metamorphosizes. So now we'll cut, keep walking and we'll, I, I prepared another tray with a few things to show you guys and then we'll try and scoop some more things. Okay, cool. Okay? Let me just, uh, I'm gonna just show them what we're, what we're dealing with here. So I just wanna give you guys a view really quick of what, what's, what kind of habitat we have here. It looks like frog heaven. Uh, it's not necessarily watercress, it might be a native vegetation in there, not too sure. So there are a few different things. Can I point them out? Yeah, point out uh, some stuff. So yeah, I have my tight pulling um, I'm gonna lift it up just a little for you so they can see that in the background too. That, that. Yeah, so that stuff, this whole stuff is cattail, okay? Uh, all the things, and uh, uh, red-winged blackbirds that you keep hearing, they love these plants, they nest on them. Uh, another thing we have here is these plants. And we are six feet away, ladies and gentlemen. Don't worry, it looks like we're closer, but. Yeah, so this is a really bad invasive plant called uh, floating willow, oh. uh, Ludwigia. It's a new invasive plant in the area and it's spreading quickly. So yeah, too bad. But cool. yeah, this is a great habitat. It's uh, pretty nice, the water is clean, so we can have all these critters. Uh, the critters don't make it dirty. They actually uh, show us that the water is clean. Yeah. And, th and those red-winged blackbirds in the background, just they're not afraid of anything. <laughs> they're really cool. So that's what's hearing in the background. So I'm going to follow you nice and slow so the pixels catch up. Uh, John and I are currently 
have been doing this uh, for a year. Uh, we don't get paid for this, but um, uh, very soon here, it looks like we may be able to, um, we may be able to, but for now, uh, we've been just doing this uh, pro bono, just bringing these, these uh, you know, virtual nature programs to you guys. And so really appreciate. You mentioned why. Why have you been doing that before the virus? Yeah, so for those of you that don't know, uh, John has been doing this for five years for people living with disability. And uh, we hooked up about a year ago in April. Um, and so we had been bringing virtual nature programs uh, to people living with disabilities that are stuck at home, isolated, they might have CPMS, uh, unable to get outdoors. And so we had been providing this as this free service for people living with disabilities. And then when, the, when this uh, COVID-19 happened, as John says it, everybody became isolated. And so we decided to open this up uh, to the general public. And since we have, it's been very successful. And once again, we're just happy that we're able to partner with Santa Clara Valley Oak Space Authority and BioBlitz Club and Virtual Photo Walks, which is a program of Saved by Nature. Um, and know that we're having an extreme uh, amount of fun bringing these programs to you. And again, we just miss you guys, miss being able to talk to you all the time and hike out with you and enjoy nature. And so if, if anybody knows people with disabilities that uh, are in a bad way, you're, you've only been locked down a couple of weeks. There are people that have been alone in their bedrooms for 10 years, unable to move. And uh, some of the uh, illnesses and disabilities are uh, quite horrific. People are in constant pain. So this just gives them a break in their day. So you can see uh, in my spot here, how uh, to get in touch with virtual photo walks, uh, pass, pass the message along, let people know, and uh, it's free service. We're just it's trying to service. just trying to help people get through the day, which is not even not that easy sometimes. <laughs> All yeah, right, we did get frog. Mine is a snake. We need a frog or a snake, they said. <laughs> so I've got, you got some stuff? Nice size. Got stuff? Okay, let me set you up and back up out of here, okay? Yeah. Okay, so some of these uh, feeders I already collected an hour ago before we got started. So you can see another snail, a really nice size tadpole right here. It's another Pacific tree frog tadpole. And what else? Yeah, most of these things we already saw. There are a few new ones. I don't know if you could see that. Yeah, it might be too tiny. So there's some springtails. Springtails are. Um, no, it's okay. I could try and I get it with my on. camera. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, let's try. Okay, back up real quick. Okay. Let's do our little dance. Let's see what we can see here. So again, you can see the tadpole, and then you can see here uh, a large mosquito larva right under my finger and a tiny tadpole. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what else? Uh, and there's one of uh, the mosquitoes, it's actually a non-biting midge. I don't know if you could see it. There's an adult standing on the water next to my finger. It's this thing. Okay, that's an adult non-biting midge. And then what else? I wanna show you something else here. Oh, you can see another one of these snails. Okay, cleaning my container, even though I washed it this morning. Uh, just like with the virus, we have to disinfect all these uh, equipment all the time because we don't want to uh, transfer um, uh, invasive species from one place to another. We have uh, an invasive snail that is spreading in the area now, so we have to disinfect everything uh, in order to prevent it from spreading even more. Um, what else? Oh yeah, that's what I want to show you the springtails. So next to my finger, there's a tiny, tiny elongated jumping thing called a springtail. It might be too small to see here. It's floating on the water. Uh, non-biting midge. So they're called non-biting midge or chironomids. Uh, they don't bite, they don't feed at all, I think, the adults. Is it true only the female mosquito bites? Yes, so the males, they actually feed on nectar sometimes, but the female, she needs their blood 
uh, that she gets from us and from other mammals and other animals um, uh, to develop her eggs. Okay, that's the protein she needs for her eggs. So the males, uh, they don't need that. And they don't even have the organ to bite us. So yeah, they don't bite. And if you could identify them, then you know that, ooh, that's a male mosquito, then it won't bite you. Anyhow, watercress, you can eat it. You wanna get it from a, a clean source though, because it, it, it absorbs pollutants. Um, but that's the same one that you'll see, that you'll buy from stores. Other prints here, we see lots of uh, pig, wild boar uh, prints here. There, there are tons of pigs in the area. We see raccoon uh, here by the creek. We sometimes, uh, on the other side, we see bobcat and coyote and other animals. Cool. Look at this uh, algae. Looks so, just looks like frog habitat. Hey, they make their, their tule boats out of this. It's, it has the air chambers. It makes it floatable. Uh, they make uh, duck decoys and things like that out of it. Good find, Marav. And then if we uh, come over to this uh, cattail and we look, you see the fluff that would make the pancake mix. And you see that um, it can make a, it's very soft and you could, you could put it in a pillow if you like. Uh, if you run your fingernail through it, it'll just blow up. It'll just like disintegrate and the whole thing just kind of goes everywhere. I don't really want to do that, but. But it's fun. As I mentioned, I record observations of things that I see and uh, I find I take photos all the time with my phone. But I can also, if I, I can see something, but I can hear it, I can record its um, sound. So let's I'll try to play you the tree frog. Can you hear it? Yeah. That was the Pacific tree frog male. And again, it's the most common uh, frog in the area. So if you hear frogs, you're, you're pretty much uh, for sure you're hearing this frog most of the time. In, in, I mean, in this area, obviously. Oh, that is it. Okay, let me, let me set you up and back up. Mm -hmm. I think show them. Go for it. So this is called Azola. Let's see if you can see that. Ooh. It's a Close water fern. So this is a real fern. It's um. Yeah, that uh, floats on the water, and it uh, it could be uh, more green than this, but you know they kind of change the color according to the conditions. I'm not sure. I think it's not. Oh. I'm not sure it's native, but it really covers up uh, ponds and creeks sometimes. Uh, because we're able to do these virtual programs, I hope to bring you um, a, uh, acorn making bread. I hope to do a simulation of making elderberry jam. Um, and also uh, making very little nuts. If I can get coffee berry in there, I'll do so. <laughs> Will you be doing a virtual walk of native edibles? Yeah, actually, uh, 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 Terry, uh, uh, Rogoway and I, uh, Terry recommended that one. So we're gonna be returning back to Eulostack Natural Area, the native plant museum. Uh, we will be making it clear that you are unable to collect there. You will not be able to gather there, but it's a great place for, for us to be able to learn. And so we'll be there we're going to be doing uh, programs every Wednesday. Uh, yes. Look at that oak in the background, guys. Um, Beautiful. About huge valley oak. Beautiful. Just look at that oak savanna in the background right here. Richard, we're going to do another program about gold, right? Yeah. So. We'll, we'll do a nice uh, virtual walk about uh, oaks and things that you can find on oaks. It's the Golden Oak Walk. Um, and uh, so these, we're going to be really walking these Wednesdays, guys. We, we set up some amazing speakers and some amazing programs. And we're just going to let you guys have it, you know, because uh, every, we all need it right now. You know, we all need to escape. We all need some positivity and some beauty and some therapeutic nature, you know, mentally and physically. And that's, that's what it's all about, you know. Is, uh, and uh, join us for the, the next hike. You can uh, find out about our next hike on savebynature.org. Um, and thank you, Mara. For... Yeah, I just loved it. I think it's wonderful that we are still able to get you out and to show you some cool nature that is right here. You know, it's like 20 minutes from downtown San Jose and you have this wild nature. I mean, if we walk a bit farther, we'll see uh, that there's coyotes and bobcats and a whole bunch of things here. So it's just wonderful that you can join us.
So thank you. Absolutely. Well, thank you, everybody. John, leave, leave the, the room open just a little bit, just in case people want to chat you know, with themselves a little bit, you know, community type thing. Um, okay. But, uh, we're definitely going to sign out. Uh, but thank you guys so much. Yeah, Have I'm a wonderful you a frog. Day. Thank send, you. And, uh, and Marat's sending a frog photo for you guys so yeah. you guys can see. Yeah, with, uh, the Are they green or bronze here? The one we saw here two days ago is brown, but brown. they're, they're all, all, all a bunch of Different them. variations. Yeah. <laughs> and they can change soon. Yeah, nice. Yeah. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.